Welcome. With this video, I'm going to show you how to tie the Carrick Bend Mat, which is a traditional Celtic knot that I use in my Carrick Bend Mat shawl design. You can find it on Ravelry in the Kino Knits Ravelry store, which I've just linked down below. So here's a couple examples of what we're going for, and you are totally going to be able to tie this after I show you this video. First thing you want to start out with is a length of I-cord. This is a four stitch I-cord. I started at the beginning and I've left my tail here. I've gotten all the way to the end and rather than tying off in a knot, I've used a locking stitch marker to hold my four stitches. It is better to be safe and sorry and get a longer I-cord. You don't want to leave it live on the ball because otherwise you can't tie the knot. And if it's too short, you're gonna be really frustrated and try to figure out how to add a length to it. So better safe than sorry, and we leave it live here so that we can pull out the end if it's too long. You can make this using the traditional method uh, with DPNs, or you can do what I did and take the easy way out and use an eye coordinating machine like this one from Embellish Knit. I'm not gonna go into how to use this because there are instructions that come with it if you buy it. All right, so here we go. We are going to start with the end that is the beginning, so the knotted end. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're just going to form a pretzel shape. So the end is underneath and I've made a pretzel. If you look at these, you notice they have four quadrants. We have just made two of those quadrants. To make the third one, you take your I cord and you just kind of keep going around. So now we've got our third quadrant. Now we need to start the actual tying. If you look at the top of the pretzel, there's four, pa four points. One, two, three, and four. And we're just gonna weave our I cord over, under, over, under at those points. So here we go. So I'm gonna go over this one, under this one, and you wanna be careful because you don't want the tail to slide out from under here. Here's my pretzel, over, and under. So you can kind of see where I've gone. Over, under, over, under. And now I'm just gonna pull all of that through. Now, I kind of like to press down so that my knot doesn't come undone and just let this bit slide. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Let's get this tail out of the way. And we mentioned we're making four quadrants. Well, we've got three of them now. One, two, three. So let's go ahead and form the fourth one. So, form the fourth one by just kind of looping this over the top. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look for a pretzel on this side and we're gonna go over, under, over, under. Again, try to just ignore your starting point tail. We're just gonna scoot it in. So over, under, over, under. So here we are, congratulations, you've done all the hard part of the knot tying. From here on out, it's just a game of tracing the path that you already made so that we get this double knot look. If you wanted, you could go bigger. You could have three, four, five, but of course you would need longer I cord for that. Now, this tail right here as it stands is not gonna be enough to go around the path that I created. So I need to tighten this up some. I don't wanna cinch it down hugely, but I don't need these big gaps in between. So I'm gonna start again with my starting point. I'm gonna hold it firm, and I'm just gonna kinda trace along the path that I made and tighten up this knot. I need a little bit of breathing room here, but I don't need big gaps like this. So tightening it up. And you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Just a little bit of space there. Now I'm just gonna trace the path I already made and I'm gonna go around this, keeping my new one around the outside of each of my established loops. So looping around here, following this path. I'm gonna be going over, under, over, under again, but this time it's gonna be easier. I don't have to figure out where to go. I just follow what I did before.
it's now near the end. If you find at this point that you don't have enough I cord to get to this point, you can once again start at the beginning, find where you started on the back, and start tightening up a little bit along the path that you established. At this point, it's just a game of filling with it and getting it to look the way you want it to. So I'm gonna do that some. And then you get to your last little bit and you can tuck it in so it's in the back. And you're gonna kind of mush it flat. So looking at this one, I see that this looks a little small. This side looks a little small compared to that. So I'm gonna keep fiddling with it and flattening it out, loosening it up, changing the, gate, the tension of where the knot is tied um, until I get something that I'm happy with. Then once I'm done, if I've got extra tail here, which is better than not having enough, I'll just take out the locking stitch marker, pull it down to about here, the back of the knot, and t finish off that I cord, tie it in a knot. Um, once you're done, you can take these ends and weave them in. I recommend maybe taking your tapestry needle that you use to weave in ends and kind of just stabbing through the I cord in random places. Not so much that it shows through through the front, but that you're going through the middle and you're securing this knot so that none of the pieces are gonna come loose or pop off. So that's how you tie that knot. Again, I use it for my Carrick Bend knot Carrick Bend Shawl, which is available in the Kino Knits Ravelry store. It's linked below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Kino Knits YouTube channel. And uh, otherwise, if you need to see it again, go back to the beginning and watch it again. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.